Okay, I'm just waiting for notification of this to appear on the screen. Okay, the meeting is now recording, so I will now take the sedarent for the Employee Issues Forum on Tuesday, the 17th of August, 2021. Do we have um, Janine Kalikis? Yep, here. Thank you. And I have apologies from Graham Campbell. I can see that we have Jerry Convery, Isabel Dorman, Lindsay Hamilton. I have apologies from Ian Harrow. Um, I can see that we have Graham Horn, do we have Jolo? No. I can see that we have Monique McAdams and Jim McGuigan. Do we have any other councillors present that I haven't mentioned? No. Okay, um, officers today um, we have present Kay McVeigh, Elaine Maxwell, Jill Batty, Helen Kelly, Karen McLeod, and myself, Carol Lyon. Um, do we have any trade union representatives present? No. OK, I'll hand back to yourself, Chair. Thank you, Carol. Agenda item one, do we have any declarations of interest? Don't see any hands. Agenda item two, that's the minutes of the meeting of the Employee Issues Forum held on the 18th of May 2021. And that's from pages three to six. I'd like to move them as a the correct record. Can we agree? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Kay McVeigh would like to provide an update on the question raised by Councillor Hamilton on the accidents and incidents from the previous meeting. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've asked our health and safety manager to take a look at the accidents and incidents on the on the back of our previous meeting and he's let me know that uh, the increase uh, that he can see is absolutely in his view tied back to uh, something that he anticipated in terms of how we've changed the accident reporting system so we're encouraging much more uh, of employees uh, to report as and when uh, they're uh, experiencing particularly um, some of the kind of verbal violent incident side of things. Um, uh, so the numbers that he's seen there uh, would absolutely concur with what he expected. He's uh, looked at the pattern across uh, the different resources and again that's quite reflective of the, the pattern of work during the period. So he's seen nothing of particular concern in there. We are encouraging people to report more and that's helping us um, deal with our situations across across the services, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Kay. Are we quite happy with the update? Okay, thank you very much. Agenda item three, that's the Council Workforce Monitoring, April to June 2021, and that's in pages 7 to 28, and Kay will take us through the item. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Chair. I'm frantically sc scrolling down to my other screen to, to get to the right page. So, as you see, it's the Council-wide Workforce Monitoring, April to June 21. And I, I would start off by saying that when you're comparing these figures with the same time last year, members need to hold in mind this time last year was quite an anomalous period. Um, so we've had a, a fair number of people not at work over, over the piece, things not happening because of lockdown. And therefore, when you, when you look at these figures, and I'll go through them um, in a bit of detail with you, just hold that in your mind. So in terms of absence, the Council's absence rate for June is 4.7% uh, and we're projecting 45 uh, for the year on that basis. Um, as always, uh, musculoskeletal and psychological conditions are the main reasons for absence over the period. And you can see um, in the bullet points there the, the increases that there are over that period. Um, and you can see the respiratory increase as well, uh, and also uh, some roundabout uh, stomach, bowel and blood, etc. Um, at section five, you can see quite an increase in terms of activity through occupational health. And that's because at this time, the previous year, uh, a lot of those services were not available, um, are certainly not available in, in the form they are. So you'll see, for example, uh, a fair increase in medical examination, employees going for physiotherapy, employees being contacted by our, our employee support officer, um, and also our other kind of employee support element, the, the PAM assist and the cognitive behavioural therapy, for example. So 
uh, it looks like quite a stark increase, but that's because uh, in the previous year, um, some of those services were either available in a very limited context or, or not at all. Similarly, when you look at Section 6, round about accidents and incidents, you're comparing, uh, again, a period when some of the workforce were not at work uh, due to lockdown arrangements. Uh, Section 7 takes you through uh, discipline and grievance. And again, some of those perhaps uh, were, were not um, active over, over the period. And in terms of labour turnover at Section 8, you can see it's still remaining remarkably low, so 0.9%. And over that particular period, and we're projecting just over 3.5%. What I would say is we're having a, a good look at the pattern of uh, leaving, or more importantly, the, the pattern of um, applicants uh, coming in because we are seeing across Scotland a little change uh, in what's happening. You'll see that in some of the, the news reports that you'll see around about perhaps uh, shortages in drivers as uh, people are uh, taken into alternative employment, for example. So we're keeping a close eye on that uh, and drilling down some of those figures to look at some of the, the kind of more finer detail to see what actions we need to take. Um, in terms of uh, the analysis of the exit interviews, we've managed to grab uh, just under a third of people uh, to speak to them about that. And again, there's there's nothing, no particular pattern in there in terms of um, levers. So moving on to recruitment monitoring, we had over 2,000 applications uh, over the period, 98 of those coming from disabled candidates, uh, 35 of whom were shortlisted for interview and I'm pleased to report nine were appointed. Uh, in terms of candidates from a black and ethnic minority background, with 76, 24 being shortlisted and nine being appointed. So again, a, a good figure there. Um, in terms of applicants who are veterans, obviously we're reporting on this now. We had 11 shortlisted for interview and none were appointed. And just to give you a little bit of a, a background on that, we've got a few issues to address in our collation of, of data there. So, for example, when somebody doesn't come for interview, that's a that's registered as a as a not appointed, and I can tell you there were three of those within those those particular uh, set of statistics. It's quite fortunate that there was quite a small number. It lets me go and have a, a look at a few, and I think we also had a bit of confusion. So we had a, the wife of a veteran applying for a job and recording herself as a veteran. So we'll we'll work our way through some of that, um, and again have a good look at uh, the reasons why they perhaps have not been selected uh, post short leading, uh, and see what. Um, support we can offer there to individuals. Uh, and I think that's probably a whistle stop to the main points of this report and I'm ha happy to take any questions. Thank you, Kay. Councillor McAdams, you've got a question? Hi, thanks, Isabel. Um, Kay, it was to do with um, Section 9 for the recruitment monitoring. Um, I dealt with a situation the other day and it was to do with the care workers and I was told, um, I was told by the resource in EK that there had been a recruitment freeze put on the care workers since March last year and that they had only just started um, interviewing or going through the recruitment process three weeks ago um, to get more home carers in and that's why they were pushing SDS for people to um, become obviously their own employers and this was to do with a 96 year old can you tell me whether that's true or not there's no recruitment freeze from a from a corporate perspective individual resources and services inevitably will have a pattern of recruitment that fits their their turnover um but no there was there's nothing from here there are there's a recruitment exercise from earlier on which i think they're going through some of the recruitment checks with so that should produce a fair number coming back into the service there's a, another advert currently out and actually it's quite fortunate uh, Jill's on the meeting today because we've also taken some steps to bring along an employability cohort uh, into uh, the, the care at home service Across Scotland, I would say people are struggling uh, to recruit in that area for a number of reasons. Some of the cities in the East Coast, for example, struggling because they've lost a lot of their workforce through through Brexit, um, but also because there are other options for people. So we're having we're having a discussion nationally from a workforce planning perspective, uh, looking at the the routes that we can encourage people to come in. But I can, I can assure you, we haven't got a recruitment freeze on. That's fine. Um, Chair, just subsequent then. So, okay, where do it? So, with that, so I have definitely been told by an officer, um, <clears throat> and I'll protect them by not using their name. I've definitely been told by an officer that in East Kilbride, 
There was a recruitment freeze put on home care workers in March last year and that they have only just started to go back through the recruitment process three weeks ago. So just where do I go with that? Because I've definitely been told that and that was just a conversation I had, which would have been on Monday, yesterday. Right. If you're happy, I'll take that back up with uh, Social Work Resources and come back to you with a, with an answer. That would be brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Councillor McGregor? Thanks. Kay, uh, I'm actually heartened by the fact that uh, you actually are looking specifically at the veterans uh, position. Uh, this is one which, as you quite rightly acknowledged, had not been getting reported previously. Uh, I'm just wondering when there is a non-appearance in this category in particular, uh, do we go back to find out if there were circumstances as to why they didn't appear or do we just say, well, they didn't appear, end of story, we move on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in answer to your question, no, we don't go back and, and uh, qualify that with the with the individual. It's an it's an online uh, interview selection process, so you pick a, a time that will suit uh, you. And inevitably, across not just this group but a, a number of other groups, people their life will have moved on. They'll have decided that perhaps they had um, another interview lined up and were successful in that, and they don't necessarily come back and and talk to us. I will have a look again at this particular group and see if there's any intelligence about the ones that are there because it's a small number. I can't do that across uh, a broader range, but I think it'll be interesting for us to know, you know, you know, kind of why this pattern exists in in the veterans. Yeah, you know, there are eleven, so we can go and find those out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Convery. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Okay, just get back to what Monique raised with you there. Uh, yeah, because I'll be very interested to get the answer you come back with because to me it's astonishing uh, that if that's the case, there's one section of this council doing something what the head of personnel is telling us shouldn't be happening. Uh, we, we've had discussion after discussion over many years about the ageing population that do social care in every council in Scotland. And you're right, there's a, there's a massive problem there. Uh, it does not help things if you come back and, God forbid, you, you don't come back and tell us this. But if you do, something's got to be done, Kate. Because if somebody's saying uh, something that's totally contrary to what this council's policy is, then that needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed ASAP. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Chair, if, once I've had the response from uh, Social Work Resources, I'll certainly ask them to clarify that with their area, and particularly in, in relation to East Cobride. So uh, I would expect a communication to go out. I can, I can assure you there is no uh, recruitment, please. OK, thank you very much. I don't see any other hands. Can we agree to note the report? Agreed. Okay. Thank you. Agenda item four, that's Community and Enterprise Resources Workforce Monitoring, April to June 2021. And that is on pages 29 to 36. And I'll ask Elaine to take us through that item. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Chair. Um, similar to what Kay has just said, this is the information for the standard workforce monitoring information for community and enterprise resources covering the period April to June 2021. Um, and again, as Kay said, you'll see there's you know a big increase in a number of the, the figures throughout the report based on where we were um, as a resource, and um, particularly in community and enterprise resource um, at the same time last year. Um, so looking at the at maximising attendance figures uh, at June 2021, the absence percentage was 6% for the resource, which has an increase, um, as I said, um, you know, significantly of 24 but that is against a backdrop of where the resource were um, in terms of the number of employees that were out and actually working um, last year um, due to the time we had at the, the, the pandemic. Um, again, looking at the projection, it is looking that um, the resource is projecting a 5.5% um, 
figure um, against the backdrop of the, the, the council wide average of 4.5%. Um, as a resource, we continue to look um, at our absence figures, look to see where there are any trends and see what actions we can take along with supporting our managers and supporting our employees um, to enable them to return to work. Um, moving on to our occupational health referrals, again, significant increase um, as um, probably quite encouraging to see as many occupational health referrals now coming through to allow us then to take the appropriate actions um, again, as I say, to, to support our employees. Our accidents again have increased, um, but again, as a result of where we were <laughs> against last year. So um, we monitor and we review all our accidents and incidents to see if there's any further action that needs to be taken in respect to these. Our employee relations figures are detailed at 4.4, um, showing that there was five hearings had happened um, during the period, um, and obviously outlines the number of dignity at work um, complaints are aware as well. I am looking at our analysis of levers. You can see um, there were 43 within the resource for that period eligible for the next interview, um, and with 37% of um, ex interviews actually being held. Um, so again, it's quite encouraging to see that there is an increase of these being conducted across the resource. Uh, in your papers, you'll see Appendix 2A provides a breakdown of the vacant posts and whether they're being replaced. Um, and um, you'll see that with the exception of two where that was um, ending of fixed term contracts, all our other ones are being replaced. Um, there is a decrease in the number of employees within the staff and watch figures at Section 5. And you'll know that for the casual um, so the seasonal appointments last year were held on for a wee slight bit longer, obviously, so they were held in the the um, staff and watch figures at December, just because of where we were in the resource. So therefore, there was a drop down. So you'll see that there was a, a decrease, uh, and that's where it'll be coming from. Um, I don't have any other points to to note within um, the context of the report, but if there's any questions specifically for the resource, I'd be happy to take them, um, or alternatively ask the forum to note the content of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Chase McAdams. Hi, thanks, Chair. Um, it was with regards to the attendance um, statistics um, for community and enterprise resources and it was uh, I wanted to find out a wee bit more about that because I can see that it's a 2.4% increase and the reason why I wanted to find out a wee bit more about that was because for the analysis of levers so it was like effectively like if I'm reading it right um, there was like seven from the previous year and then so there's an increase of 36, which is a lot of people um, to leave. And the reason I mention this is because as elected members, we've all been sent out the brief from planning, which obviously is under community and enterprises, you know, giving us this open ended for when um, they might be able to um, come back to us, whether it will be the end of summer or it will be autumn when they'll then review when planning are actually going to start coming back to us as elected members for the queries and questions that we've got. So anything you have with regards to planning would help specifically, but it's just to kind of give us a better understanding of like why we're in this situation. Because I, I, I was taking heed of the fact that you said that, you know, when, um, when these figures flag up, you look to see what you can do to support the departments. So I was looking to find out why we were kind of there just now? I think there's a couple of things. Obviously, um, community and enterprise resources, as you'll know, we've got a, a huge number of frontline employees, um, you know, in terms of that manual workforce. So we will always see peaks, um, you know, in a number of the areas, whether that's, you know, within facilities or waste grounds, et cetera. Um, you know, and, and again, looking at the age, and I think uh, Councillor Convery mentioned something, you know, about age and workforce. So we're, all, we're always very conscious of kind of the age profile and, and the jobs that they do. So we've got to kind of look at that, monitor it. You've got a high volume of females employed in that sector as well, which comes with um, a variety of their own, um, you know, medical situations, which we always look at and support and encourage and see what we can do to assist to come back, um, you know, in that. I think the key thing to look at is where we were as a resource last year, um, you know, within particularly within facilities and grounds, there was a lot of employees that were working on a rota basis and uh, based on the fact that most of the schools had um stops or closed, but we had the hub. So people were working on a rota basis. So we might not have seen um 
the same number of absences that we previously would have done just because of that pattern. I think looking at planning, um, you know, that, that you spoke about specifically, there has been a wee bit of a turnover within there. Um, and I've been working with planning in, in, in respect of getting the adverts out and trying to forward think about, well, what would the knock-on effect be? Um, should we be appointing internally? Um, and sometimes these processes just take a wee bit longer just to make sure that we, we're targeting the right area. Um, you know, and we talked about, you know, we should be targeting it, looking at social media, etc. I think, unfortunately, there, there has been a couple of people that have left that managed to secure other jobs I am, um, you know, as is ever all of our rights, you know, you can look for another job um, and, um, you know, as well as some other the factors, nothing specifically worrying um, in terms of the planning. I think it's just been, um, it's been a time and thing and, and when people have decided to move on as well as, you know, people I am um, either being recruited elsewhere or deciding to leave for other reasons, but nothing concerning from my point of view. And I've been working quite closely with the managers in that section um, to try and move things on, um, Councillor McAdam. Chair, can I just ask something subsequent, please? Yes, you can. Thanks. Um, it, 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 do you know what it is? It's just because obviously the pandemic's been terrible and I think as a local authority we've done a really good job and to actually keep things moving and whatever else. And it was just because you know that we as councillors we know about other resources that have been like really heavy hit but they've not they've, they've not kind of closed down to us as elected members whereas it's like you know planning is definitely like a hands-off whereas it's just like you know housing's like kept on going social work's kept on going like nobody said to us oh well you know going to not make kind of queries and though you know we don't want to have meetings with you because we've got other things to prioritize and I just I thought it was strange that basically like you know when there's other departments that we all know as elected members that are like you know effectively like are groaning you know and they've kept on going whereas we get that memo out from planning and I just found that strange if you could just shed some light on what made them different and more affected by COVID than any of the other departments and council? I can only, I certainly know that there was officers in that area that were supporting the grants. I am, and Kay can um, correct me if I am wrong. I, am, I think the resources were diverted elsewhere for a number of people which may have impacted. I, am, I can certainly go back to the resource um, and ask for a bit more clarification, Councillor McAdam, just to confirm. That's is the, the information that I'm aware of, as I say, as well as there's a couple of leavers. Sadly, we had... Um, a death in service and there was a couple of things that just impacted in that area so I think given the smallish numbers um, it hasn't taken much then to, to impact on the service delivery so but I'll, I'll, I'll double check my um, thought process in that and make sure that I've given you the correct information and feed that back to you. Thanks Elaine. Kay you want to come in at that point? I, I was going to confirm that Elaine was entirely entirely correct. Uh, so you know there are two, there are a couple of factors there. As Elaine's al already uh, mentioned, it's a relatively small group, um, and I know uh, kind of from a finance and corporate perspective, we we've also been providing support to help them out with the the grant side of thing, which. Um, like many of the other things that we've taken on through the pandemic, it's yeah, it's new, it's a, uh, it's quite cumbersome, um, etc. So I, I know the team had been fairly heavily stretched there. So uh, as I said, it's possibly a, a question that um, the director will be able to answer more readily in the round uh, than we will. So Elaine will, will get that answer and get it back to you. Okay, thank you, Councillor McGregor. Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> You're going to be surprised at this one. I'm going to commend you and congratulate you on the fact that uh, the analysis of levers uh, at 37 per cent, I think that that is probably the highest I've seen from any resource. So I hope you've got what you've been doing right patented and you're going to sell this to all the other resources in order that they can actually sort of uh, get their figures increased as well. But I'm hoping I'm not preempting a situation at the next Employee Issues Forum, Elaine, where I'm actually then going to say, why has it gone down? Uh, but I'm sure you'll keep that consistency going. Just to say, well done and that, uh, thank you. And if it's a case of you doing something differently, uh, then please uh, roll it out to the other resources and let's see if we can get these figures up to a more appreciable uh, level. Thank you.
Thank you, Councillor McGuigan, and I just hope you've not jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks very much for that. Thank you. Can we agree to know the report? Agreed. OK, thank you very much. Moving on to agenda item five, and that's employability in South Lanarkshire, the kickstart kick scheme progress, and that's in pages 37 to 40, and the last jilted to take us through the item. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chair, and thanks for inviting me along to talk about uh, one of the things that we're currently doing in relation to employability in South Lanarkshire. So this is one of the COVID responses to the employment challenges that have been identified, particularly in the 16 to 24 year old age group. Uh, and this particular scheme, the Kickstart scheme, is funded by the UK government and administered through the Department of Work and Pensions. There are other schemes which um, have started a little bit later and funded through Scottish Government and Skills Development Scotland and I'd be happy to come and talk about them at a future date. So this was an early response actually in October last year there's quite a lot of um, publicity about the kickstart scheme but then its um, launch was stymied by lockdown so in effect it didn't really get started until March April 2021. Uh, universal credit claimants are the key uh, eligibility group for uh, this particular scheme uh, and that means that it doesn't include some 16 to 17 year olds. In practice our experience of this scheme is that it's mainly 20 to 24 year olds that have been taking up the opportunities and the offer is 26 weeks of paid work experience at national minimum wage with the hope that it will lead to employment or at least be a stepping stone to future employment or some other positive destination such as uh, training, modern apprenticeship or possibly uh, college or university courses. The Council is both a host and a gateway employer for this scheme. So as a host, we're offering up to 50 vacancies uh, as a Council. And as a gateway employer, we're enabling uh, small businesses throughout uh, the South Lanarkshire area to take up the opportunity. And we have scope for up to 350 placements, uh, depending on employer demand. Uh, all of the placements should start by the end of December 2021, but then can run on through for 26 weeks after that. Because of the slow start to the scheme, because of lockdown and uh, uh, COVID uh, restrictions, it's likely that the scheme is going to be extended. That's what all the indications are at the moment. Um, the DWP do all the vetting and administration of the scheme and I think they were taken a little bit by surprise by the volume of employers um, who were interested in uh, taking advantage of this particular scheme. At 4.4 um, is the numbers in terms of uptake and advertising at the moment. It's actually improved since the report was submitted. Uh, so we now have 13 appointed within the council and 31 in the wider uh, South Lanarkshire employer community. Referral rates of young people come through the Department of Work and Pensions in the main and job centres. It's been quite slow over the summer and I think that's because there's a number of schemes available to this particular age group and also we see some hesitancy amongst young people about being confident about coming back into the workplace uh, and also about what their best options are. So in some ways they're waiting to see, for example, exam results being confirmed last week uh, before they make their choices. And just in the last week, we have actually seen an increase in the referral rate. Where there is a particular need for young people who have additional support needs, for example, we're able to wrap around some funding from uh, the Youth Guarantee Programme, which is a separate scheme, to extend the placement for a bit longer, or where there is a particular technical requirement for a qualification, which takes a bit longer than 26 weeks to work. So although most uh, of the placements are 26 weeks, there is some scope to extend that to up to 52 weeks. Um, We've appointed some young people ourselves within the council and within personnel services. I have to say the quality has been excellent. There have been really good um, appointments and I would hope that their experience of working with us will stand them in good stead for whatever they decide to do in the future. Um, I would say that for some, it's 
they are not really that clear about what it is they want to do as a career and are taking a kickstart opportunity in order to maybe um, rule some things out or rule some career options in, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but for the 26 weeks that they're with us or with an employer, they are paid, they are being trained um, and it's a, a good opportunity for them. Um, on that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, just ask uh, the forum to note the content of the report. Thank you very much, Jill. It's a very positive and encouraging report, so I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Councillor Condry? Yeah, and likewise, Isabel, I think it's a good it's first class. The only, there's always a wee drawback for me. The only wee bit I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about, we're paying them a national minimum wage. Why are we not paying them the minimum wage that South Lancashire pay? Okay, so the scheme from the UK government only allows you to pay the national minimum wage as part of that payment. However, there are some situations where we can pay the living wage and that's where it is a public or third sector uh, placement and we do that. So any placement within the council would be paid at the living wage rate. Um, we also are looking where we have um, contact with employers, looking to encourage them to pay the living wage. Some already do and they are happy to do that. And where they don't, we take the opportunity of having that conversation with them uh, just to um, encourage them to take advantage of the support that there is to become a living wage accredited employer. I hope that yeah. answers the question. No, well, it doesn't, it doesn't. It? What I'm asking for, Jill, OK, that's what the government say. We can top it up. We've got the discretion to top it up as a council. Why are we uh, not doing that? We've got the discretion to top it up through funding from other sources, so through the Scottish Government. And where we're able to do that, we do uh, take that opportunity. So there are a number of placements which are available through Kickstart, which we put wraparound funding around, and that takes it up to the living wage. Um, there certainly isn't the money to do that for every opportunity that there is, but where we can, we do. And who dictates that the money's no there to do it? So there's a finite pot of money that's available, um, and that comes through... At yeah, but the council, the council, the council, I know what you're saying, I understand totally your argument, but what I'm saying is, as a council, we could take a political decision to give these kids the, the, the basic money that we pay anybody that comes in to work for South Lancashire Council, because basically we've got a, for 26 weeks and it's good and I'm not decrying it, I, I welcome it, but... They can be working alongside somebody that's getting one pound odd a, 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 an hour more than them. That just doesn't sit well with me. I why, why can we know? Why, I what, has, has it been, well, has it been looked at? That's what I'm asking the question. Or should I raise it with the chief executive? Okay. So right. we, can, we can certainly um, have a look at what we're doing for this year. Um, we've got a number of placements we were offering uh, the living wage and I can provide you with the information on that. Where the wraparound funding comes from is a different funding source and there are some rules attached to that about what we do. Um, I'm happy to share that with you separately. Yeah, because I mean, it's not going to be a lot of money, really. You see, we've got, we've got 15 vacancies that we're going to try and fill and 13 people have taken it up. So out of the 13, if we're talking two or three people, it would be infinitesimal amount of money to give these kids a good, a real good start. Uh, they would be proud to work for South Lanarkshire. So Thanks, just, just to be clear, where it's a council placement, which is those numbers you were talking about there, uh, that would be paid at the living wage. In the wider community where we've got up to 350 placements, um, our pot of money would be limited in that case. Sure, sure. Yeah, but I'm only talking about the kids that we take on into South Lanarkshire. We control their, that destiny. Sorry, I've not made myself clear then. They are paid at the living wage. Fine. If they're taken Thanks on within much. the council, they are paid at the living wage. My apologies. Brilliant. You've answered the question. Thank you. Thank you. I understood what you said that initially, actually, Jill, but I, I thought maybe I'd missed something myself. I'm a wee bit thick, but Isabel, that's the problem. No, 
No, not at all, not at all. Any other questions or comments? I'm happy to note their vote. Okay, well, thank, again, thank you very much. I think it's very, very positive and excellent report. So thank you for that. And I don't have any other urgent business, so I'd like to thank you all for your attendance. I'll ask Carol to stop the recording and I'll close the meeting. Thank you all very much. Take care. Thanks.